I guess I'll just start with, um, you know, obviously, very obvious, um, certainly less than ideal, right? It'll be as mild as possible, uh, starting the year off three and five, um, and yeah, to make any excuses about it. Um, uh, we gotta play better, I've gotta coach better, uh, we gotta get more consistently, um, Productive on both ends of the court. We're doing some good things in, in each game. Um, and I've probably racked my brain about every um, possible change that could be made within what we're doing. Um, you need to change the start lineup, you know, play bigger, play smaller. Um, reality is probably a little bit of everything. I don't know if any one thing is necessarily the issue, but um, the results have to change. and. Um, committed to making sure that we continue to work towards that. Um, another great opportunity here this weekend for us to, you know, kind of continue to evolve as a team uh, against a talented uh, Tulsa team who's much improved from last year. Um, and it'll be, a, it'll be a challenge for us, like every game will be. Uh, this team is in, in any position to take any game against any opponent anywhere, uh, lightly or for, for granted. So we got to prepare really well for the next couple of days to give ourselves a great chance to win. As a coach or a player, have you been in a spot like this before? You've had some rough starts to, to Big 12 play, but but not to, to start the year that the way that you guys have. Uh, man, I played in a long time, mm -hmm. and it, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 nece I can't necessarily at this moment really point. To, I'm sure I have. I mean, just, you just uh, in the game long enough, and certainly you have moments that you, you know, you wish you could stop and go fix right away. But um, the reality is, we got to. We got to. I, I told our team, like, we, you know, we can we can feel like we're better than our record shows, and in many ways, you can look at our talent and say we probably should be better, but we are. We have to, we're three and five, you know, and there's no um, um, no way around it. You know, we can argue about you know possession here or there, right? Then go our way, a bounce goes our way. Uh, but it hasn't. So the fact is, we gotta we gotta own where we are right now, and then we gotta be men about the work that it's gonna take, and there's gonna be a lot of work to uh, to make this in a successful season as we move forward. You mentioned it's not just one thing. Does it does it feel like you plug one hole and something else springs up, or is there? Yeah, I, I don't want to say it. See, I also don't want to you know, like it's not. We don't need to panic. Um, we need to play with urgency for sure. Uh, and I think there's a there's a there's a line there. Because, you know, there's still a month or so to go before we play the most important part of our season. This is really important. Uh, and I don't want to dismiss the non-conference by any means. But we always talk about the process of getting better as the calendar turns. I mean, I've been pretty consistent over seven years that that's how we approach this. And we want to win while we're doing that. Um, um, so I, I don't know if I want to say, like, it's like we, we don't have a – bunch of problems. Um, we have some areas we got to get better. We got to become a better rebounding team collectively. Now, that wasn't the issue the other day. We rebounded really well. Um, in, in essence, we let one guy beat us, and that's disappointing because we've always prided ourselves in being better defensively, particularly this time of year. Um, and I knew that the case was we weren't as good as we have been, but we still should be able to put ourselves in a better position to win a game when the team has one person that really dominates like that. Because not only was he scoring, but he's also the reason that the other guys were getting the baskets they got. So he he's responsible for more than the 33 he scored. Uh, but credit to him, you know, he played aggressively. Um, so while there, there are probably a multi, multitude of things, uh, we got to shoot more consistently. Uh, we didn't shoot it poorly, but we didn't shoot it well enough. Uh, we didn't finish well enough around the rim. And obviously we didn't get stops enough during the course of the game. So they're all fixable things, um, and that's our job to fix them. Along those lines, I mean, and we're not in your film sessions, nor should we be, but, you know, some coaches coach off the negative, some coach off the positive, some do both. I remember a play, maybe 12 minutes left in the first half, turnover. They come down the other end, I think it was Keller, stepped in, defended the ball, 
it's pushed out where it's going out of bounds. He's the guy that flies over and gets it, saves it in. I think it was, forget who got it, but got it to the other end of Williams for a lay-in. Mm -hmm. How much do you push that? Say, guys, this this is the effort. This is, I'm just out of curiosity. Yeah, no, no, it, it matters. And, and, and I'll tell you this, especially for our young guys, like it's really important that they hear those things and see themselves doing things that lead to success. Um, the fact is you guys are here representing our fans and the public and what, like they don't care. Like at the end of the day, we didn't win the game. Right. So so that play in, in a vacuum is great. And it's a great sign that Keller is competitive. He cares, he hustles, and you can, you, you can see him growing into being somebody that our fans, particularly the way he plays, we really enjoy having him around here. Um, but a two-point loss is no different. And, and, you know, I say this with all due respect. A lot of people just wake up the next morning and see the box score or see it scroll across, scroll across the ticker. So they're not watching that stuff anyway. It doesn't really matter. And so I'm, I'm man enough to come in here and say, no, we just got to play better, more consistently. We have to win more. And uh, I've got to coach better. Uh, I've got to continue to put our, our team in positions where we're more successful. And um, at, the, at the end of the day, that's really the most important thing. Those other things matter as a coach internally. And we'll go in that because we were off yesterday by rule. Uh, we'll go in there and we'll talk about the numbers and we'll show them the film. And we're going to show some positive things. I mean, we've gotten off to pretty good starts in all these games. I mean, I think well, we're up 9-2. What was it, 7-2? I mean, we're up. I mean, we got off to a good start against Creighton. Nine to two. We got off to a good start against yeah. St. Bonaventure. We got off to a good start against Notre Dame. And then at some point in the first half, I don't know if it's us taking our foot off the gas or the other team responding, and, and then we're in a fight. And then they make their run, and we're coming up short at the end. So there's some positive things to teach these kids uh, about how to win, how to finish. You know, the process word is nasty, right? <laughs> no one cares. It's year seven. They want results, and they want them now, and they want them every time we step on the court. And I respect that. Yeah, my first experience in sports was as a fan. I grew up in the 80s as a Yankees fan. I saw a lot of bad baseball. <laughs> you know, and then we turned it, and I was a Giants fan. I am still a Yankees fan, still a Giants fan, still a Knicks fan. We haven't been good for 20 years. So I, I understand the frustration that our fans may have with a program that once was very nationally relevant and a building that was always full and people always respected how hard it was to play in here as an opponent. That we got to, you know, it's, it's on me to get us back to that place where this is a program with a team that's competitive every night particularly against teams that people expect us to beat, although they expect us to win them all. They certainly expect us to win the games that we play against Abilene Christian and St. Bonaventure in Southern Illinois, and I understand that. I don't think I'm Pollyanna, but I like the position you put us in. I mean, I'm, we're representing a whole lot of people out there. Absolutely. If that's what we're Listen, doing. Listen, I respect yeah. that. I think but, I've always you know. tried to be respectful of you guys. I don't I don't no. take any of this personal right. um, because I, I do get this is a – Big time job at a big time place, and I've got to do a better job of making it successful. The only reason I brought up that play is that's the kind of play that makes me want to watch more. Sure, is sure. when a guy does that. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, Keller was, you know, pardon my French, balls to the wall. Yes, and he was the one who turned it over, and it's very typical. You have to teach freshmen, usually from an older guy, what that looks like. So to have him have those instincts to make a negative play and turn it into something that worked out well for our team in the moment. And I applauded him in the huddle the next time, and we're going to show that on, on film today. We need more of those plays is kind of the message, though. With as young as this group is, this is a lot of their first time losing. <clears throat> How have they kind of responded to the last couple of weeks? You know, I don't think they really know. Um, and I don't think they really understand the um, gravity of it. And this is why I think you asked me a question a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. about the tournament and all, whatever. Like, is that so, like I, I can't do that to Jamire and Keller? He hasn't had anything to do with us, you know, whatever. For whatever reason we didn't make it, whether it wasn't one or we were banned. All those years count as years we didn't make the tournament. You know, the best year we had, no one watched. Oh, was able to be here, right? We finished 11th in the country. No one remembers or cares. We just haven't been to the tournament enough in seven years. And that's we got to play better to put ourselves in position to do that. So it, this is probably the million dollar question, but how do you, from here, get better and, and turn into the team that, that you think this group can be? It's practice. I mean, there's, there's no like we, we're not gonna all of a sudden like it, it's college 
basketball, but there's no waiver wire. Yeah. Right? There's no, we're not going into the room today figuring out, all right, who's available out there to portray. Like, we have our guys, and we believe in these kids. Um, we're talented enough. We don't have a great margin for error. You know, a lot of it, again, not an excuse. Like, Brandon Garrison is starting against other six, eight, six, nine guys and consistently being pushed around for the first time in his life. Um, and so it's, he's, he's got to learn how to deal with that, how to play through some fatigue sometimes. Um, wasn't his fault, but in two years, he's going to get that rebound. I mean, I hope it's, I hope it's in two weeks. I hope it's in three days that, you know, Javon's going to make that layup. I think nine times out of 10, he missed the one that day. I mean, and at the end of the day, that's the result is what it is. And so we've got to show up today to practice with a growth mindset. We got to watch the film. As hard as it is for me, it's going to be probably my fifth time watching it, um, and, and say, how do we foul a guy that we've talked about containing without fouling enough that he shot 13 free throws and a half? You know, that's just lack of focus, lack of discipline. They, they called it a little tight. I mean, some, some of the stuff you don't necessarily can control, right? Um, how do we leave Brown open for catch and shoot threes five times in a game where we told him he has to dribble the ball to, to score, right? We got to watch that because it's coming up at, against Baylor. It's coming up against Texas Tech. It's coming up against Iowa State. Can't, you know, so um, what you do is you just try to block out the, the noise and, and it's, it's, it's warranted um, and focus on the task at hand, which is us getting better today, right? Let's make sure we get through a practice today. Let's not foul a three-point shooter. You know, let's let's step up to the line and make the free throws that we're going to practice today, like we always do. Um, let's not have careless turnovers. Let's convert and transition. Like, you you don't change it because it doesn't go well. If you believe in your process, you stick with it and you grind it out until it turns. And these guys start to have consistent, you know, success and results. What's Isaiah's status going into? I, I think he's going to be available. Um, you know, try not to, it's early, it's early in the week, you know, anything can happen, but he's definitely, he was in practice on, uh, what's today? Today's Thursday, so I guess we practiced last one Tuesday. He was in practice. Uh, still had a little tenderness there. And again, the last thing I want to do is have another setback. So I don't want to put him out there till he feels like, you know, I'm good. And, and I think he's getting there. He was in here yesterday on the day off, getting treatment on it. Uh, he was in here this morning getting shots. I think he'll be full going practice today and that'll give us an opportunity to have a few days of practice before we play them on Sunday. Not that he's going to be the savior or anything, but is, are there things that you guys are struggling at right now that, that he can help with? Well, he is naturally a good rebounder, not because he's tall, because that's something he's always done well. Uh, a lot of tall guys aren't great rebounders. Uh, I've seen that before. Uh, but, but he also gives us an element of rim protection that we don't have as consistently otherwise because of the way he can move around. Um, gives us the ability to kind of switch a little bit more. He's a little bit more mobile in terms of lateral quickness, garden. Um, and it gives us a lot of threat. You know, we, you know, we don't necessarily, they, the other guys can catch lobs, but it's, it's different, if, you know, if that makes any sense. When you think back to the times where you, know, you, you guys had a possession on the last play to score and it, then ball didn't go through the net or even final minutes where you guys are struggling to score, can you think back and point to one thing why you think that is, or was it more so, hey, we got looks, but shots weren't going in? Uh, you talking about like on the last second shot? Uh, the last second or shot or just the final two minutes of the game, yeah. Um, let's see. So I, I obviously the last shot we got was a layup. We, we just He just missed it. I mean, maybe felt like there was contact coming and, and tried to play to it a little bit. Don't fault the kid. He took the shot we wanted him to take. We put the ball in the hands of our best player, and he got a one-foot shot. I mean, down one, I probably have a hard time not trying that again tomorrow, you know. Um, prior to that, I think we got a shot blocked in front of our bench. Um, you know, it was good to see Hickling get going. I think that helped us offensively create some balance in our offense. So, there, there was th again, there's some small positives there. But I don't, I don't remember every play, you know. Um, but I certainly remember the last couple possessions there that you know, just didn't turn out that way. And I think like in the Notre Dame and St. Bonaventure game, a little bit in Abilene Christian, like final two minutes, I think you guys only had like one field goal. Like, and you, you might not remember, but is it do people get stagnant late? Like, what or is it just missing shots? Like, what what can you just from what you remember? It, it, it's probably different each time. Yeah. I mean, it's 
man, it, it's the, the game isn't. I, don't really, I can't really compare it to other sports. I don't know them well enough, but it's we don't get to stop it and put everybody, you know, every, every play like all right. The game is very fluid. Basketball is, and obviously sometimes you're coming out of a timeout, so that helps you. But you know, a lot of times if it's a tie game, especially you, you probably want to just get keep the ball in the hands of your best guy, and let them let them make a decision and live with the result. Um, so I, I can't remember back to the Notre Dame game. So much has happened since then. I know we 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 got the ball in the hands of Jabbar and, and I think both of those games, um, and that we'll continue to do that. You know, he'll come through. There's no doubt. I mean. Javon was the guy you wanted to take the shot. He got the shot you wanted. Sure. What was this? Do you remember what, what the secondary was? If he'd been blocked Yeah, so, so we, yeah, we had Bryce and him kind of in a two-man action with okay. a screen in the middle. And so we didn't know if they would switch it or trap. And so Bryce would have been an option two there to try to get downhill. But what we told him was we want to put pressure on the rim. We didn't want to settle for a jump shot there. Maybe get a foul. Maybe get a foul. And I, and, I, and we didn't necessarily say foul because I didn't want to put that in his head. But it almost, when I go back and watch the film, it looked like he took the long step to try to seek the contact before he just went to execute it. In reality, it was, we knew they weren't, they're not a shot blocking team. We didn't really have to think about that that way. Um, but yeah, Bryce would have probably been an option too in that case. Mike, you, you mentioned you guys still want this to be a successful season. Mm -hmm. What are you considering a success this season? I don't know. I mean, it, it's a long way from the end still, you know. Um, so we're eight games in, so we got at least 23 left. We're probably not going 23 and 0. That would be successful, I would think. Probably not happening. Um, but I think you just kind of let the season play because it's everything's kind of circumstantial also, right? I mean, um, and again, I, I don't want to I don't want to disrespect our fans by saying last year was a success, but when you strip down the challenges we face injury wise, like th those are real things, man. Like nobody wanted Musa to get hurt and miss six games in the middle of conference play, and then when he got back. And we had him and Avery for a couple of games. Like, we started to play really, really well. I believe Avery got hurt in the OU game. We wiped the floor with the, I mean, we were playing well. We go and keep some momentum. And then he's gone. Basically, he, that was it. He didn't play the rest of the year. Um, so those are challenges. You just you got you to deal with them, you know. So I don't, I don't really want to say that now because I don't know what is going to happen, you know. A lot of things could change. We could become uh, an electric defensive team again somehow if we could become more forceful at the point of attack. Maybe Isaiah becomes the rim protection guy that we kind of needed there to become a little bit more whole at the rim. Um, John Michael and, and Bryce have struggled shooting. They, they both have proven they can, they can make shots. So as those things evolve, we'll be able to determine based off of how we perform. I mean, I, I don't I don't want to put a number on it. I think it's unfair to the team uh, to tell them that I, I don't know, win 12 of them. I don't know. You know, now you're 19 or whatever, 15, 15. Yeah, that's not that's not fair. You know. Uh, so let's let's see. You know, uh, I, I get the question, but I don't I don't know if it's really if there's a real answer to that. Different things spark different guys playing in an NBA arena. How how much do you expect that to crank him? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a unique opportunity. We've done it. We, you know, the, obviously the Barclays, the right. Nets play. Uh, so it's, there's a little bit of familiarity with it. Um, they're definitely different settings, different backgrounds. The backdrop's a little different than four shooter. So uh, hopefully we get down there and be able to get ourselves familiar with it uh, before we have to play. But I, I think our guys will be excited. Uh, I think they just want to play. I, and, and I believe this. These guys, these kids want to win. Uh, they they were hurting on, on Tuesday evening uh, coming out of there because they – you know, they, they play really hard. Uh, we didn't always play smart. Um, and, and obviously, we let one guy kind of determine our fate. But, you know, these kids care, and they want to make sure that they do what they can to, to put our team and the program in a more positive light. Yeah. So, Brian, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to Javon's interview with John mm -hmm. afterwards on radio, and uh, I felt sorry for both of them because I don't think John could have done anything to get much out of Javon. He, at that point, he was, he was pretty well – yeah, he, he carries it. I mean, yeah, you know, he does. The, the, the beauty of a guy like Javon and other great players I've been around is they want they want the moment and they feel like they are supposed to deliver, you know. And um, 
I believe in them. You know, I told them that after the game. You know, there were a lot of plays that could have put us in position to not need a shot at the end to win. But we were there, and he got the ball, and it didn't go his way. Uh, and those those are hard lessons to live through. Um, I was never good enough for my coach to put the ball in my hands. I was usually the guy that had to try to stop somebody. Um, but I respect that he wants the ball in that moment, and he continues to to feel confident that, that we, when we come back to him, he's going to be able to come through for us. Yeah, are there hardest for the people that have accountability? Though, sure, that? sure. I mean, I, you know, that's the only thing I think sometimes. I think people who watch, and they're definitely vested. Like, they're not more vested. <laughs> You know they're invested, no question about it. They, you know, they come and watch the games. They, they support the program, but these kids practice every day to see positive results when they play the game. And when that doesn't happen, it hurts them. And um, you know, as a staff, that's why we got to be good at helping put them in the best position to have that success because they deserve it. You Mike, said a few times, or you said a few things today that remind me of a quote. I think it was Kareem. I'm probably gonna butcher it, but it was along the lines of. Before you learn to win, you have to learn not to lose. Do you subscribe to that at all? Or do you think that, you know, you uh, not to lose? I understand it. Um, everything you do competitively is difficult. Like at, 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 at a higher level, if you go, the more difficult it gets. So there's certainly, um, there's things to learn in becoming a winner. You know, that sometimes require you to, to fail on the way, right? Um, but you can never accept it. You can never be okay with the outcome not being what you want. That's gotta drive you more, you know, and it's gotta make you, you know, figure it out. Like that's our job as a staff, is to figure it out for the kids, but figure it out for our fans, figure it out for our administration, our alumni, uh, but most importantly for the guys that we know are gonna show up at. 2.30 to watch film and learn and come to practice and trust us to put them in positions to have success. So yes, and kind of no, right? <laughs> you know, I get the sentiment, um, but it's, it's, it's about winning. Mike, you brought up the fans a couple times throughout this. I assume you kind of see some of the frustration from time to time. Is that hard to kind of handle as a coach? No. Um, Again, and I don't I don't see as much as I used to by choice. Mm -hmm. um, hey, you don't know what's real out there, you know. So it's a, it's probably not a whole lot of productivity in following it, you know. And so I've tried to kind of pull back a little bit. I'm still engaged, mm -hmm. and I see some of it. Um, I, I would say this again. I, I was a fan before I ever played or coached. <laughs> Nothing's more frustrating than the team you want to win, not win. Like, I get it, you know. Um, I'm also on the other side of it, and I know what is going into the process. Um, and so what you haven't heard me say is, we're too young to win, or we can't, or please be patient. Like, I, don't, I want people to want us to win. I want people to have expectations, you know. I want, I want people to show up on Sunday and watch us play against – Tulsa, I, I, I do. I want them to show up expecting us to win. And when we don't, I want them to let me know that they don't like what they see. Like, that's part of what you get to do when you invest in something. You get to tell people how you feel about it. And so I respect that wholeheartedly. 